Today I want to talk a little bit about um, Tattoo and Body Mod Elitism and Gatekeeping. She's one of my least favorite parts of the Body Mod world and one that doesn't get a lot of talk is the fact that a lot of the information that is available is only available to you uh, about tattoos and piercings if you know a guy or if you're a cool kid or one of those kinds of things. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about my experience getting into body mods and the general lack of information around them as I was growing up as a kid. Um, I should say that um, when I was young, uh, there really wasn't much of this in a public space at all. And the overall reception of body mods and tattoos were really, really um, shallow and poor, I would say. Most people associated with uh, criminal activity or gang related stuff, or um, you certainly wouldn't be able to get a job, all of those things. A little bit of that still uh, survives today, but it was a lot more prevalent um, in the early and mid 90s when I was growing up. And when I got into body mod myself, um, I got my first piercing when I was six, but that doesn't really count, I don't think. Uh, that was just an ear piercing. When I got my first, uh, I got my first real piercing, I'll say, was my, uh, my septum piercing and then my eyebrow piercing when I was 12. That was back in the year 2000. So, um, when I was growing up, I had a mullet <laughs> and, uh, hand-me-down clothes and I was always picked on when I was in elementary school because of that stuff. But, when I got into middle school, I shaved a mohawk into my hair and I got an eyebrow piercing and my septum pierced and I wore a leather bomber jacket. And where I lived then, I became the cool kid. I was um, like the it kid there. My whole family moved from where I was born, however, to um, a much more conservative area. And it was not cool to be the different kid. Um, I got things thrown at me, I got bullied, all of that stuff. Uh, the teachers at my school picked on me for, or not picked on me, uh, made bets about how long it would be before I conformed because of how hard my life was gonna be. That's how sinister um, the outlook on body mods were. It, it's funny to me that something that's supposed to make you dark looking or um, bad looking or um, uh, a criminal gets you treated um, like a monster and makes those other people almost act like they're the thing that they're accusing you of being. Um, so I had it both ways from a very early age. I was beloved for it. And then, um, it, like flipping a switch, I was hated for my, my, uh, self-expression. Um, so I, I learned early on that what's normal a lot of times depends on the area you're in um, or what's acceptable. A lot of times it depends on the area you're in. Often people will assume that I'm from um, some area where tattooing and piercing is very normal or that it's very accepted or um, that I'm in a progressive area or something, but I'm not at all. Um, where I live is quite conservative and kind of a Bible belt too, which makes what I do even more controversial. But to be honest with you, um, once I found my way to deal with that animosity uh, and use it even as a fuel to continue and go farther into body mod, um, it became um, more of a pride for me um, to be sort of uh, pushing against that. But I never discluded people, which is what happens now a lot of the time I see. And what I mean by that is a lot of my best friends are people who don't have tattoos or piercings because there weren't people like that around here. And part of my job for those people was breaking it down for them and explaining it to them in a way that makes sense or that um, they can appreciate. Um, my tattoos and piercings are like my collection. So give you an example of that. A good friend of mine has um, 
an anime collection. He's got thousands of figures and posters, all kinds of shit all over the walls. Much more crowded than these walls. These are my wife's things, except this Krampus, which I really love. I just got uh, for Christmas. That is mine, but I don't have much deco. When she moved in here, I didn't have much of anything on my walls. It was very um, utilitarian, uh, mechanical. What was on the walls is there for a purpose kind of thing. And now, of course, she's decorated, much like this guy. Um, that This is my collection. This is my stuff. This is the, the, the aesthetic that I like. This is the stuff I think is cool. Um, so he understands that now, but where when I first met this guy, he didn't get it, and he probably did assume some negative things about tattooed people. But through my example, and through um, just sort of being a normal human being that also likes being tattooed, over time, that barrier is broken down, and we see that we're just two people that like different things. So, as I said, when I go into his house, I equate my tattoos to his collection of anime shit. Um, and fair enough, we all like what we like, right? So, I don't hold that against him, and he doesn't hold it against me. But what I see happening a lot these days, even in my area, with people with far less tattoos than me, and I mean far less, they'll have like a full sleeve, or like uh, two sleeves and a few pieces here or there. Certainly nothing that would um, raise any sort of bar or uh, move any boundaries. And they can't be seen with anyone but other people who have tattoos and piercings. It's like they think that that makes them cooler or something. Or that that makes them badasses or something. Or like um, they they would look bad if they were seen with, with a regular ass person. This person that I was describing earlier, if you were to see the two of us together, you would never ever imagine that we would be friends if you were to judge it on looks. Um, he's very, very average looking, normal, whatever that means. And I'm quite the outlier. I don't think that that should be a disqualifier for friendship. I don't think that that, if he doesn't have tattoos and piercings, I should just assume that he couldn't possibly understand me because he's too stupid or normal or something, which is a lot of the time the um, impression I get from some of these cool kids and hipsters that uh, really want to keep body mods, tattoos and piercings to themselves and, and they like the stigma and it makes them feel edgy or something where... Me as a kid growing up and the trouble I had um, because of body mods and piercings and stuff that I had when I was young and continuing as an adult, my experience has shaped me in a way that says we don't need less communication of why we do this and why it's okay. We need more. We don't need to be hiding in the shadows and not just uh, not afraid of sharing the information, but almost um, disinterested in sharing the information. The amount of reclusive um, heavy body mod figures I know who will only talk to you if you have a platform or some way of helping them uh, is absolutely detrimental to the community in general. Um, these people are, I think, a big, especially the ones that have been doing it a long time, I think are a big part of the reason why body mods haven't come forward um, into the the social zeitgeist more is because I think they're afraid of uh, a sort of body mod wall martification or um, like we'll take nerd culture when the big bag theory happened a lot of uh, people who profess to be nerds didn't want that title anymore because it became watered down and gimmicky and um, modernized and um, monetized right and I, I think that um, the heavy mod community is resistant to that happening. And uh, they gatekeep by keeping information, um, by not dispelling myths, and sometimes even perpetuating myths. This happens a lot in um, the tattoo sphere, especially with, like I've found with heavy black work, for example, there are a lot of heavy black workers out there that, um, they make it seem like it's some mystical art that they can solidly saturate black and they don't really show healed pictures or they don't really um, let on that things aren't quite um, perfect the first time. 
And right now with blackout tattoos being super trendy, I have a lot of people messaging me after they've gone to famous black workers and they're asking me why their black isn't solid or super dark like it is on Instagram. And I spend more time than I care to uh, explaining to these people why, because their tattoo artists didn't tell them why and just took their money and sold them an image on Instagram. Um, that happens a lot. There's also the other way around this where I see all the time tongue splits that are being done too deep, for example, but they trend really hard. And so that gets pushed by the algorithm. And then people think that that's what a proper tongue split should be. To, uh, whereas a tongue split really shouldn't be that deep. But that's the kind of thing you only know if you know. And it's not like you can Google that. Um, I've said before, I had, uh, my Lebray was leaking. My uh, 26 millimeter Lebray is too, um, too well healed right now. And sometimes when I'm talking for hours on end, you'll get a little bit of a drip. So no one could tell me the answer to that. How do I fix this? Well, the answer is um, I had to figure it out myself. And that's because there's no one that talks about this. There's no published articles about this. There's no um, authorities on this stuff. So all I had to do is I take it out overnight now and it, I dry it up and I um, it kind of resets it so it's not overstretched. Now, you could say that that's common sense, but I've had a million of those. Uh, like when I got my, um, I had cross threading stuck in my septum and there was no one who could help me. Several piercers wouldn't talk to me and several piercers tried in the city I'm in, tried to help loosen it, but there was nothing they could do. So I have a story that's fairly unique, but I'll bet it's happened to a few other people. Um, where I had cross threading stuck in my septum and there was no help there. So I ended up having to actually saw that piece out with a jeweler's saw over many, a period of many months. Um, that was a long, long time ago, but um, there's lots of those. There's tattoo infection. If you Google tattoo infection, all you get is uh, rotting flesh and bad information. Now, there are people who know what tattoo infection looks like and how to deal with it, but that information almost doesn't exist. All there is is misinformation. Um, as a community, the body mod community is a failed state, in my opinion. We've done a very poor job of explaining things and trying to make them make sense to the public. And the people who get, oftentimes the people who get upset about being, um, ridiculed for the way they look are the same people who refuse to share the information or provide explanations for why they do what they do. And I feel like if those same people who are so upset about being ridiculed were to be a little more open about why they are the way they are um, and the process behind it all and all the experiential side, the public in general, sure, you would still have bad apples and bad actors but the greater public probably would feel a little less um, abrasive towards it. Now, you're always going to have the odd man out thing. That's almost evolutionary. If you look strange, you're probably always going to be um, treated as the odd man out. That's human nature. But that doesn't mean that in 2020 or 2021, when we're more civilized theoretically than we've ever been, that we can't do a better job of trying to explain it. So I will take some of the onus um, on us in the body mod community. It's not just the world acting out against us or um, ostracizing the culture. It's the culture doing that to itself to a large degree. Um, there's no mysticism to this. We're all just regular people. We all just have a passion for this. I'm sure there are some people who are, feel differently about this than I do, for sure. But I don't want body mod culture to stay in the dark forever. And part of the reason why I created my social media platform in general is because I was an unknown doing heavy mods for a long time. Um, and when I would go on my Instagram, which was very small for years, all I would see is cheesy, moody, edgy boy stuff where people are trying to look badass or cool or 
very, very fake and almost push the notion that um, body mods are just for cool kids. And if you're not a cool kid, don't apply. And oh, it hurts. And if you're not tough like I am, don't bother. That whole thing. And I'm disgusted by all of that macho um, cool kid behavior. It pisses me off. And it's we don't need to make this less approachable. We need to make it more approachable. And so that, those kinds of um, uh, figureheads that I would see on Instagram propelled me to come forward and through my work ethic and through my insights and um, through my ability, my unique ability to suffer um, for my body modification, uh, create a platform where I can share honest truth and shed light on some of the most polarizing parts of this community and do it in a way that makes it understandable for people who might not know why, but might like to know why people want to look this way and feel these things. Because as I said, almost no one has done that. Even, even the tattoo icons that make it, the big influencers that really go far, that you everybody knows who they are, these guys are not doing their part, as far as I'm concerned, to shed light on um, the industry. They're just using it for their own enrichment. And that's just not for me. Um, maybe you disagree. Maybe you think that, that some things should be sacred and maybe they should be hidden away. And um, it should be something that you have to dig deep into to find out. But I think that we could do with a little more open honest discussion on a lot of these topics anyway i've got a lot more a lot more to say on this and i barely scratched the sub uh the subject uh surface of the subject matter um i'll probably make a second part to this video if you guys enjoy this one if i'm just rambling and you'd rather i not just let me know in the comments but i have a lot to say on um gatekeeping and um the cool kids club in general in the tattoo and pierce uh, community. Anyway, thanks for watching.